In this third part of this lecture, we're going to be talking about novelty. I'm going to tell you why novelty is very important and just going to define what novelty is and also how you can break novelty by being not very careful with your work. So novelty is an objective quality, objective quality, which is a condition for the patentability of an invention. So that means that it's, objective, it's not a subjective thing whether I think it's novel or it's not novel. Your invention is either novel or it is not novel. There is not a degree of novelty or maybe a little bit novel. It's either novel or if it's not novel. So novelty cannot be quantified and an invention is either novel or not. That's very important to remember. There is no degrees. It's yes or no. And very simply, an invention is novel if it is not identical to an already existing known thing. You change something, is new. The example before, we do square or rectangular screens. I can make a rectangular screen with a fifth edge on the top. It is not identical to the rectangular, so it's a novel design. Then kind of patent it is a different story. But basically novelty shows that as soon as I change something and it is not identical to something else, it is novel. That's basically to keep it very near. So let's look at an example of novelty. We all know what this is. This is a hammer. Very simple tool. We have stick of wood, metal head. You can put your nail heel here, bang it down, and that we have a hammer. And we have this pointy thing here that can be used to make it dig a hole or if you can to move around the nail. Have this. Then let's say I come up with thought, hmm, every time I use this guy, I get blisters in my hand. I can put, embed some plastic things here to kind of make a better grip. Would that be novel? Yeah, if I put it together and it's kind of all unique and it's, I say, it's kind of, I've, I'm adding a plastic thing to my hammer and I cannot get a better grip. And that would be kind of the limit. It's not, it's not identical to the previous hammer, right? Or differently here, on this part here, where I can use this to make a hole to remove the nails, I might decide that, well, that's not very efficient. Instead of having this guy like this, I will make some kind of, I have here my nail part and here I'll put a hook like this. And then if I turn it around, this hook will be like that. So I can put my nail in here and bring it out. No, which is what we see today with normal hammers. That is novel. That I'm bringing novelty. I'm still having the hammer where I can, which I can use to bang the, the, the nails in. But I made a modification on this side here and I have added an extra element to my hammer. So could I patent this? Well, yes, because basically I have a novel design. I add a feature, so basically I have an in inventive step in which I am adding the capability of removing a nail. It is industrially applicable. It is not immoral. So basically I can patent it. I could patent this modification. Can I then sell my hammer? Well, that's a different story. We'll see that later when we talk about freedom to operate in a couple of weeks. But I might not be able to sell it, and we'll get that to the other lecture. But the idea is that I can patent this modification on the hammer. So that where is my novelty, because it's novel, it's industrial, and I can use it. So this is kind of just to show how novelty can be an important thing. It can be just a modification of something already existing. I'm adding a functionality to what is already existing. I have novelty, and I have inventive step. So novelty is the most important of them all. That's what I like to say, because First criterion, if, I'm, if I have no novelty in my invention, then all the other house of cards will fall. We need to have novelty. So novelty is the first criterion that an examiner will look at. If your invention is not novel, then you will not get your patent. Very clear. That's no, no way to avoid that. Novelty is objective and cannot be quantified. It's either novel or not. It is therefore very important that you make sure that you are absolutely novel. I keep saying this absolutely novel. You need to make sure about that. So here is where I introduce the concept of prior art. So prior art would be any kind of information or any kind of things that might contain a description of your invention. So any mention of your novelty or a part of your novelty that is found in the public domain will destroy, an you will destroy your novelty. So I'm sorry for using always the word novelty, but it's very important. So basically what I'm trying to say is that anything, if anything comes up in public domain, which is everything is in the public, could be Google, could be Yahoo, could be... A uh, newspaper could be anything which is available to everybody. If any mention of it, of your invention, any mention of your invention will be on the public domain, therefore you're not novel anymore. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So the point is, 
you're in the lab or you're in your work and you come up with a cool invention, shut up, don't talk about it. Talk about it with your supervisor, with your tech transfer office, but do not mention anything to anybody because it can have lethal effects. So do not talk, do not publish, do not discuss, share anything about it until you have talked to your tech transfer office or, panther, or lawyers or your supervisor. Basically, make sure they do it because novelty will be destroyed if you send that paper out. Oh, I have this cool scientific invention, I have this cool result, I need to have my paper published because my PhD, you send your paper out, that's it, it's in the public domain. So if your get, paper gets published, it's in the public domain, you are not novel anymore. You send a tweet about your invention, or you put a Facebook post saying, hey, I just got this result, very cool. That's it, public domain, it's on Facebook, it's on Twitter, it's not novel anymore. You kill yourself. You send an answer for a conference. Really cool conference, I really want to go to a conference in, in Hawaii or in the Caribbean, let me send an abstract so I can go there. Abstract gets accepted, gets put into the booklet of the conference, it's public domain, you lost your novelty. You bring your poster to the conference. Where you get asked to give a, temin, a seminar at a guest university, they really want to hear about your new stuff and you just mention one slide, ooh, here is the result, that slide has just destroyed your novelty, if it's a public domain. You're with your friends, you're having a, a beer with your friends, you talk about your research and you come up with this thing, something hears, you can, people can hear it and blah, that's it. So basically what I'm trying to say is that don't be very careful with how you talk about your research. If you think you have an invention, try to avoid talking about it until you have talked to somebody that knows what to do with it. For example, here, a classical thing, you forget your laptop in your taxi or your lab book in, in your taxi and somebody finds it and reads it and talks about it, that's it, you're out. So, basically, any publicly accessible display, description, mention, presentation, dissemination of your invention will, and not may, it will destroy your novelty. Very important to keep that in mind on what to do it. So, I was talking before about prior art, which is a public domain, what is prior art? So, one thing you would do when you have an invention or they think you have an invention, you would be asked to do kind of a prior art search to see if anybody has ever come up with something like that. And prior art is basically everything and anything you can think and of and you can find it. So everything and anything. Can be PubMed, can be Google, can be Yahoo, can be a patent database, Mickey Mouse magazine, and we'll talk about that later. An obscure newspaper from Guinea-Bissau, a poster abstract at a little conference about yak breeding in Tibet. Somebody has presented that. That's it. It's prior art. It's public domain. A discussion had in the park, a classroom, Anything, anywhere, whatever is out there is prior art and will be found out, hopefully, by a patent examiner and will be discussed as whether this is relevant and will be destroy your novelty or not. So to conclude with that, let's have an example, which is a classical example of the prior art that can be found in the most obscure places. And actually now with the opening of the Russian archives and the Eastern European archives, some more goodies are coming out in terms of prior art, but we'll not get there. So it's called the Donald Duck Scoop. So that's kind of an example which is used widely on this thing. So it's a pretty cute story where in the 60s this Danish inve inventor, Karl Koya, he found out this, or he invented this way of recovering sunken ships by basically throwing in ping pong balls or any kind of floating little balls inside the sunk ship and then the buoyancy of these balls will bring the ship up back to surface. So he applied for patents, he obtained one in the United Kingdom and one in Germany. So he said, oh great, I have patents here and there. However, Holland, the Netherlands, they refused to grant this patent because in their opinion, there was a lack of novelty and they found prior art. So they found a document that said, well, somebody has already done that. So you're not novelty, you're not novel. And we cannot give you. So what was that? I was Donald Duck. So we had this cartoon from 1949, The Sunken Yacht, where actually Donald Duck and the uh, three little nephews, they want to retrieve a sunken yacht. And to do that, they throw in ping pong balls. So we say here, Donald Duck is under the water, and there's the tube, throwing in ping pong balls, the kids are throwing the ping pong balls down, the balls are going into the hull of the boat, and the boat comes up. That is prior art. But it's a cartoon. It's a cartoon, but as we said at the beginning, an invention is something that comes out from 
your head is an idea that comes out from your intellect, some idea that comes out from your brain. And in this case, Walt Disney, or whoever wrote this story, came up with the idea of using floating devices or floating little floating balls to put into a sunken ship to bring up the ship from the, from the sea. So the idea was already there. For the Dutch uh, patent office, the inventor could have looked at that, that cartoon and say, hey, that's a brilliant idea, let me patent it. So, you see, it's kind of, it was there, its idea was already there, and therefore the patent was not given. So that is ju just to show that, contrary to what people think, prior art or the non-novelty is not only found on patent databases or scientific journals. It can be anything. It can be a Donald Duck cartoon. It can be any single thing. So basically, I'm stressing this point because to do a good job on this and to make sure not to have bad surprises, one should be able to start or should think of looking everywhere and anywhere for prior art to make sure that our invention is completely novel. So I will leave you with Donald Duck on this, on this lecture. I hope this was clear. We have a, had a little introduction of what intellectual property is, what kind of IPs we have. We talked about patents, what they are. We talked about novelty, about the various steps for patentability. And in the next lectures, we're going to be talk, we're going to get deeper into patentability in biotech, freedom to operate, and other elements, and how to search for databases, and what, the, what, how, what patents are in terms of timelines, and how to apply for them.